You know what the biggest mistake people make when they're talking on camera? They talk to the camera. That's right, you heard it here first. Stop talking to the camera and start talking to people. I want to share with you the top mistakes you could well be making and you just don't know it, but more importantly, I'm also going to tell you how to fix those mistakes. Now, I haven't pulled this out of the back of a van somewhere. I'm basing this on over a decade of experience as a voiceover actor and a commercial talk show host, let alone a trillion years making content. You really have to keep in mind that you're talking to another human, okay? Not a camera, so there is somebody on the other side of this video. I'm not talking to my, in this case, a Sony ZV-1. You're not talking to the camera. You're talking to another human. Now, you don't know their name. You don't know where they're from. In fact, chances are you don't know anything about them, but that's okay because you're talking to another human not a camera. To help with this, you gotta visualize who they are. Now that might be hard, so if you can't visualize anybody, just maybe visualize a friend, and if that's difficult, then visualize that you're talking to me. It's not as scary as it, it is as scary as it seems to visualize me talking, yeah, anyway. But that's what you need to do is step one. Visualize who they are. Don't use any jargon or buzzwords that they might not understand. Don't use any formal language, and even the words formal language sounds like, formal language. You get what I'm saying, right? We're having a casual conversation like you would with your friends. Remember this, right? And this is the really important thing. You're talking to somebody. You're not talking at them looking down your nose. No, no, you're talking to me and you right now. Ask them questions, like talk to them like a normal human. Ask them questions, pause maybe for a split second when you ask whatever that question is, and then move on to whatever else that you're going to be saying. Body language, hands, smiles, that's all good. But if you overdo it, I mean, if you're doing like Jackie Chan impressions when you're constantly talking with your hands, it can get really distracting to the autofocus and it can also really drive your audience nuts. But if that's the way you talk, then that's the way you talk. Just be you because remember, you're talking to another human. So look down the lens of the actual camera. If you're not looking down the lens of a camera, maybe you're looking at a flip out screen or a monitor that's on top of the camera. If you're looking at any of those and not looking down the lens, it just shows you're completely disinterested in your audience. You don't care. You're just not making a connection because the eyes are the pathway to the soul or some weird thing. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. We connect through the eyes. In fact, if that's going to be a huge struggle for you, do what Casey Neistat does quite a lot of the time. He's always wearing sunglasses because you can never tell where his eyes are. It just looks like he's talking to you. Am I right, Casey? Talking to the lens. Don't talk in a monotone. It can be hard, but what you've got to remember is people are watching and listening to you. I even find it hard to do. This is actually hard to talk in a monotone for me because I'm so amazing, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Don't talk in a monotone. It can be hard, but people are watching and listening to your content. And if it sounds like you're bored out of your mind in a monotone, then with no pitch and no inflections, then it makes it incredibly hard for the audience to connect to you. And that's what we want is a really good connection between you and me. And just what you gotta remember is breathe every now and again. Pacing is so, so, so important. And then the occasional pause, depending on how long the pause should be. Because if there's pauses, then it means drama. And if there's drama, you never know what's coming next. If you need to record a part again because you screwed it up for whatever reason, then don't just re-record the part that you've screwed up. Go back a line or two, go back maybe a few sentences. Now, there's a couple of reasons for this. The main one really though, is your energy levels because if I screw, because if I, see? I need to go back a little bit so I can get this line going again. And then by the time you get to the part you've screwed up, hopefully you won't screw it up again, but the energy and the flow is a lot more natural and it doesn't just sound like you crowbarred in an extra line with a really harsh jump cut. When you're recording a video, you really have to raise your voice just a bit. So if I was talking to somebody that was kind of in the room here, this is the way I would be kind of talking. But because I'm talking to camera and more importantly, the people behind the camera, and that's a clue, you gotta talk to those folks. So you gotta project your voice, this is what we call it. So we're talking to whoever is behind the camera. Let's pretend we've got a camera person that's holding the camera, or if you're in a small, medium room, then talk to the back of the room. So you're raising your voice up maybe 25, 30% than you normally would. Now there's a few reasons for this. Number one, when you start raising your voice, it brings in your performance level. So it's, 
it's like a switch that goes off. So you've got the performance. This brings your energy up. And if it's bringing your energy up and your voice is up a little bit, this gives you huge on-screen presence. And more importantly, it gives you huge on-screen confidence. So just talk beyond the camera, just a bit. Ums and ahs are uh, an apps. Uh, they're, uh, uh, uh. Ums and ahs are a pain in the butt to listen to because not only does it sound like you haven't a clue what you're on about, it's just, uh, mm, see, I don't know what I'm going to say next. That's what it sounds like. It really sounds like you are completely <laughs> clueless. So cut them out. Now, I'm not saying cut them out in the edit because we're going to have a whole jump cut scenario where you should cut them out is out of your vocab. So if you, uh, mm, uh, mm, see, it gets so annoying. Okay, I'm overdoing it a little bit, but you get what I'm saying. Just redo the line redo the sentence, whatever the spiel, whatever you've got saying, just cut out the ums and as. And speaking of cutting stuff out, there's probably a few words, if you go back and watch all of your videos or the last, I don't know, 10 videos that you've got, you're gonna see, I'm saying that word a lot. I would hazard a guess if I'm right on this, I want you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. I bet you, you are saying the word so a lot. We'll go back and look in your videos and if you've seen, oh, I actually do say the word so quite a lot, then yeah, you owe me a subscription. Is that a, is that a fair deal? Fair deal. So see what I'm doing? The word so is a crutch. Now a crutch is something that you lean on. It means that you don't really know what's coming next, even though you do, but your brain isn't thinking that far ahead. So there's words that you're using all the time that get very annoying. It's only when you listen back or watch back your stuff that you'll identify, ah, so. I owe Vicky subscription. Cut out those crutch words. Not having a clue what you're saying. Oh, let me just look at my, yeah. So you don't have to write a script when it comes to making a talking head video or talking to camera, but you should have a few bullet points at the very least, especially if you're just starting out because reading a script or memorizing a script can be quite painful and it takes a lot of practice. If you don't have all the time for all the practice in the world, a few bullet points to get you from point A to point B to point C. Now, the less of those things that you have, the more likely you're to make all of the mistakes that I've just highlighted in this video. A little bit of structure goes a long, long way. I mean, there's a reason people have scripts in Hollywood, right? Now, there's also something else that would be a really good reason for you to take on board, and that's this video here. Yep. That would be pretty sweet. Take two. Ow. You know what the biggest mistake? <laughs> Why did I screw that one up? Let's go again. <laughs> oh my God, I'm screw that one up as well. Mm. <laughs> How?